Monsieur Forge, thank you for coming here today. Um, I want to talk about dreams because you have a system of philosophy and one of its main pillars is dream work. Now, being a psychiatrist, I know a lot about dreams. Very early on in one's scientific training, one is introduced to Freud and to Jung, and one's introduced to other great psychiatrists of the past who have used dreams. Now, when I was learning about Freud, I'm afraid I rejected most of what he did because he had, to me, a very stereotyped view of life. It was mainly sex. We all know about trains going through tunnels and things like that. Um, yes, interesting when you're 16 and 17, but as you get more mature, um, I feel that it didn't bring the sort of breadth to dream work that I wanted to see. Jung, on the other hand, was quite different. He had a much wider view of dreams. And uh, I think if I was going to be uh, an analyst of dreams, I would, in fact, go more towards Jungian dreams. But I think you've taken the whole field further than that. Now, I've written a book on dreams, and so I understand the neurophysiology of dreams, and it's called The Hidden Door. Tell me how you came to using dreams in your philosophy? Well, early on on the 80s, I started to record my dream, write my dream, and I had books and books and books and dream written down. And I soon realized that there were messages to be cracked. And the more I establish my own lexicon, the more I realized the dream were using it and speaking to me. And uh, I used to record five, six, up to seven dreams a night, sometimes just a vignette, sometimes five, six long dreams. And it appeared very clearly that the dream were providing an angle or a map. Whether you have map dream, which clearly tells you where you are, what is blocking, what you should be doing, or you have one or two vignettes, which clearly points out on which angle you should be working on yourself. And very soon, I realized that uh, we're always dealing with the same problem, but the dream provides a fresh angle. And it can only work, you can only go down your defense system uh, if, it's f if it's fresh. So that was my discovery with dream. Right. Now, from what you say there and from what I know, you in fact are talking about dreams as being, as giving you a message, if you like, a message from your higher self, a different part of yourself, a higher self, as to how you can proceed in your understanding of the deeper parts of yourself and how you can start uh, getting rid of destroying the blocks that you have inside yourself. Is that correct? Yes, how to progress in my maze. What is the next door which has to be pushed to progress into my maze? Because if I want to free myself from the psychological structure, which is the main aim of my philosophical system, the 4Ds, uh, we have to drill within the psychological structure. And dream are providing uh, the angle to do that. One of the things I first noticed with your dreams, when, when I thought, OK, well, um, Alan says that his dreams are important, you better start recording your dreams and thinking about them. And I got a dream one night uh, which was all numbers. You got many dreams with numbers in that phase. You had just dreamed with numbers, if you remember, for something like two or three weeks. Yes, I did. And I never dream in numbers. And so I asked you if your system had numbers in it. And you said, yes. What do numbers mean? Well, uh, I've used number from 1 to 22, and uh, I attach a key phrase which embodies the meaning of the number, like 1 is all possibility, 2 hidden feminine structure, 3 uh, feminine power, 
for masculine weakness, five inner teacher, and so on and so on. But what was interesting, if you remember when we did that, is you made me understand that I had an archetype. It's you who has arised this understanding in me. Yes, that was very clear because the dreams I felt with numbers in were giving me a message and when I decoded them according to your system then it's quite clear that I was buying into your archetype and I say that because people who go through a Freudian analysis get Freudian dreams people who go through a Jungian analysis also get Jungian dreams and I seem to be working on myself using the Forgetian method so this was a Forgetian archetype that I was going into. But that's fascinating in itself because that means uh, we are designed to evolve. If you are seeing a Freudian shrink, mechanically you'll do Freudian dream. You'll resonate which what, with what allows you to move ahead. Absolutely. But the questions that you ask in a Freudian analysis are rather different from the dismantling of the blocks in your personality. But you'll deal, with Freud, sorry, you'll deal with Freud projection. Yes, yes you do. But nevertheless, it's an opportunity to move. That's certainly why you connect to the Freudian archetype. It's quite fascinating. Yes, it is. I agree. And one of the things that I noticed about the, gr the group that you, that you ran, which I attended, is that uh, it was a very weak excuse to say you hadn't got a dream uh, because you had forgotten your dream book. Now, that, that is purely a defense mechanism. There's some dream that you don't want to talk about so you'll forget your dream book. But everybody comes with their dream book. And it, it is also interesting how one's own defense mechanism sometimes will block a dream. So wake up, no dream lie there very quietly, very quietly, and the dream slowly surfaces. And I've found that those dreams which come, if you like, on, on a second reading of the dream process can be very powerful ones and have a lot to tell us. Now, not only do the dreams seem to give us a message about how to go, but they're very specific and it, they have their own symbolism. For example, water. What does water mean? Water symbolizes unconscious work to be done. It means drilling into your repressed layers. Like uh, if you have a level of um, uncertainty to do something, you don't feel uh, you're going to go for this job or you're not going to uh, seduce this woman. And you, have, you, you don't mean if you have a level of timidity right below you'll have layers of fear of rejection. Below that layers of fear of rejection you have a layer of low self-worth. So uh, when you dream of water it pushes you to drill into your layers. And uh, you also have other symbols. What does going down into a tunnel mean? You go into your darkness. You go into your repressed stuff. And the darker it is the more repressed it is. And what happens if you go right down to the bottom, what do you find? Nothing. <laughs> yes, it's not quite the answer. What I was wanting was that you come to the more fundamental layers. Oh, the, which more, contain the more fundamental layers are repressed guilt. I mean, the darker, the darker, dark, dark package we all sit on. Yes, is very much guilt. Well, guilt seems to be the best concept uh, 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 to tag this layer. And uh, when you are working on your dreams and working in yourself, it seems to me that uh, the personality layers, if you like, our constructed layers are in the body and not in the mind. Well, the mind, uh, the intellect, will be the shuffle. Uh, but as you go down, you feel the resonance of the body and you feel within the body uh, those layers are absolutely active. If your identity is frightened, you'll feel it at the solar plexus. Yes. If you really feel something really deep, really dark, linked to guilt, it will be in the guts feeling. 
So you really, after a while working with that system, you really feel it's all in the body. And one of the cl clues that you can get is something called resonance. And for me, resonance is a sort of shivery feeling which goes over the body when um, a deeper layer is being approached, or if you like, a deeper layer is being threatened. And it's a very good way of using the dream. So let's go on to dream interpretation. So uh, daylight means... You're fully conscious of the message of the dream. And I'm dreaming about a house in London. London, what does London symbolize for you? Where you made your life? Very much so. A house, if it's your house, it's linked to your security. If it's somebody else's house, who does that, how long, who's, who does that house belongs to? And what does that person symbolize for me in its human quality, its human characteristic? And bit by bit, you get the message of the dream. So you can build it up by taking the subject of the dream out of the dream and seeing what it means to you. Yes, absolutely. In real life. What does that scene will mean in real life? But the first thing uh, is usually to get the theme of the dream. And uh, very, very often the scene is linked to the place. Like uh, uh, it's your house in London. London is where you made your life. Uh, your house is your security, so the theme of the dream will be your relation to your security where you made your life. Yes, and it, it's amazing the way that the dreams can speak to you like that. And now that I've been working with my dreams a little, I can in fact get resonances. So, supposing I get a dream oh, that I, I'm in a battle, and I'm watching it, where am I watching it from? Well, I seem to be off the coast. Well, am I standing in the water? Am I flying in the air? Am I standing on a boat? Now, what I do is I just hold these ideas in my mind and see if they resonate. Tell me why the resonance is so important. Well, the resonance shows you you're not lured by your intellect. Most of the time, your intellect will lure you. And your intellect will lure you for one simple reason. Your intellect is made of thoughts. Thoughts come from memory. And it's within memory, the basic bugs, the basic anchor, who all the entire personality are. And this personality is in itself a system of defense. So the more you get into the layers, the more the system will be at risk and the more the intellect will just try to throw you on the wrong avenue, on the wrong path. But when you get the resonance, uh, your chance of being lured by the intellect greatly diminishes. Now, you've used the word lure. What do you mean by that? Lures, decoys. Your system will protect itself through decoys. A wrong idea, uh, erasing an idea, erasing a dream you just had. All of a sudden you have mental fog and you don't remember anything. Or you are taken by the, an upsurge of emotion to disconnect you from the very thing which will put your inner logic at risk. Now, tell me, supposing I dreamt that I died in a dream, what would that mean? It can be many, many, many different examples. Uh, uh, to make a breakthrough is to die to your psychological entity. If you are a real seeker and you dream that you die, uh, it's very likely uh, you're not far from the last door of your maze. So what, what I've learned about your dream philosophy is that every night we get a message as to how we have to go on in our battle of clearing ourselves of a lot of the psychological blocks that have stopped us being true to our true nature. Would that be a good summing up? Yes, uh, uh, we wake up, we get the dream, and uh, whether we got really an angle where you ca we can attack the next wall of our fortress or the next door of our maze, or whether we have a mad dream which clearly tells us uh, where we are, what is blocking, uh, what progress we've made, what progress lies ahead, what is blocking, 
Uh, and when you tune that with a resonance, it really helps you to accelerate the process. Thank you. And it's just worth saying, I think, that in my book, I have in fact got a list of what the numbers mean. And I go into a discussion of uh, what some of the symbols mean as well. And I found it a very helpful way of really progressing uh, in my psychological battle with myself.